So today we have Kevin Reardon from Creighton University School of Dentistry. How are you doing today, Kevin? Doing good. Doing all right. Surviving this corona crisis. Right. Hey, that's all that matters, man. All that matters is that we're surviving. <laughs> but um, if you can, can you go ahead and give us a brief summary of your dental school journey? So what I mean by that, uh, things like where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major in, and if you did a year off. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm from the western suburbs of Chicago, about 30 minutes west of the city, a town called Elmhurst, Illinois. Um, I did my undergrad at the University of Louisville. Go Cards. Uh, I, I majored in finance. I was always pre-dent there, but I knew that as a dentist, I was going to be a small business owner. My dad's a dentist, and he kind of advised me that um, it's a valuable skill set to have to, to know some of the business end of things. So I um, ended up getting my degree in finance with all the, well, all of the prereqs. So I like almost had a bio minor, but didn't quite. Um, and I did end up needing to take another year. I had like the minimum, I had like the very minimum uh, number of prereqs to get into a couple schools, but not quite to make my, you know, I wanted to apply to a few more schools. So um, I had to, I took another gap year where I uh, took anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology, um, biochem, physics, just some of those extra things to, to get a few more schools off my, uh, you know, make myself a more competitive candidate. Right. Awesome. And so did you do those classes at your university or did you go and do them at like a community college? So I didn't do them at the, at the University of Louisville. I did them at a four-year institution in Elmhurst um, okay. at, at home. Cause I know uh, there's some, there's some stuff up in the air. If, does it look less uh, competitive to have it at a community college? Um, it was definitely more expensive to do it at a four-year institution, but um, I mean, it worked out, so. It was worth it, it was worth it. And right. so did you do any like pre-dental type of programs to make yourself more uh, attractive to, uh, like with your application, like within Creighton, do they have any type of like? No, Creighton has two different programs. They've got a, um, they've got a master's program that now has, there's six seats available for that. So there's a, um, a master's in bio material and dental materials. And then there's a master's in oral biology. Okay. Um, you can apply to those programs. There's three seats in each, each one of those programs. And that gets you guaranteed acceptance into dental school. If you complete them with a certain above a certain GPA. Okay. Um, there's also a, a post bac uh, certificate program as well that also same same deal as a guaranteed um entrance into dental school if you if you pass those with a certain gpa i did not um i did not do those okay okay awesome thank you thank you and so it's interesting because you know you didn't have the traditional uh science background so you know i really want to ask you how did you do well on the dat you know a lot of our viewers always ask that question like what would you recommend to somebody who's about to take it yeah i think the the most important thing for the DAT is just to, to know yourself and how you study and then go do like 10 times more than you think that you need. Yeah. So if someone who is uh, every day they come home from school and they, they, they reorganize their notes and they study a little bit each day, um, then you're going to need to start like three, four months out and just do a little bit every day um, to get that going. Whereas maybe you do that four or five days before a regular exam. Um, and then if you're someone who crams, I'm not, you can't really cram per se for the yeah. DAT, but, um, I am more of a crammer. And so I just took like two weeks where I had absolutely nothing going on. So, you know, you're not having to worry about school or a job, but I had 12 hours a day to just go and hit, uh, hit the DAT hard. And so that's what I did. And, um, I, that worked out for me, I know. And so it worked out. Uh, did you use like boot camp? Like what'd you use? Oh, I did. I used Kaplan, which, uh, is, was expensive. And I didn't, you know, like, I didn't think that the like lectures that you log in or like, you know, they had the lectures basically like it's like a class. Right. I didn't think that was helpful, but, uh, the quizzes and practice tests were all really helpful. And one note, if you do do that, they get progressively harder. And so I had like a meltdown panic attack when I took my last one. Um, and I got like a 16 or like a, I don't know what I got, but I remember it was like a 
I was getting like in the 22-ish, 20, 20-ish, 19, whatever. And then I was going slow. I went like 22, 19, and then I got like a 16 or something or 17 that last practice test. But they do scale up in difficulty. Um, and then I ended up, I'm not, I, I'm okay, Sharon. I ended up getting a 20 academic average um, with a 22 PAT. And I pretty much, all my scores were between 19 and 23. Okay. So I didn't have much variation. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And so, I mean, obviously you got the interview and so can you kind of uh, walk us through what your interview day was like? Yeah. Um, at Creighton, the interview is super laid back. It's pretty much, um, it's like just what questions do you have? And, and that's the thing is the most important thing for interviewing at Creighton is, is intelligent questions. Um, and yeah, it, it, I would say it's probably the most laid back of anything that I've heard anywhere. There's not like, it's one-on-one -on -one with our admissions, uh, with either the Dean of Admissions or one of the people on the admissions committee. And um, like I said, super laid back, whereas I know other schools will have like three on one where there's three professors in there, or you do like rotating style, um, you know, kind of like a gauntlet of mini interviews. Uh, this was just one, it, it's not a big interview day, even they don't have like a whole, it's just like you get a tour, you go and you talk to the, our, our admissions dean, and that's, like I said, pretty laid back. Well, oh, yeah, that's chill. <laughs> that's definitely chill. Okay. The, and so mm -hmm. I want to ask you, uh, you know, a quick little side question. So what made you decide on Creighton versus the other schools you interviewed at? Like, was it the fact that, you know, these the interview was so relaxed and you felt at home? Or, you know, like what was that? that deciding oh, for me? No, for me it was the – um, I had two cousins that had gone there and okay. they had so many positive things to say about the culture of Creighton and how friendly the administration and faculty and staff are. Um, it being, it's a private school and I think that inherently has a little bit more of like school pride in it and so many of the, almost every single professor has gone here and there's just like a Creighton pride that um, from top to bottom within the classes and in the administration that you definitely feel. Um, and that's been my experience 100%. Um, also helps that they let me in, which um, right, right. <laughs> is, is that saying that the, the best school is the one that, 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 you, uh, that you get in. That's very true also. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, great, great. And so what year are you right now? I'm a fourth year. Yeah, well, fourth maybe year. four. We're not all in school right now. You know, COVID-19, who knows what I am really, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like fourth year. What are y'all, like, what's going on, you know? Like, I mean, have you already, uh, I know some people already did all their requirements, so they're okay. Uh, no one at our school has taken any licensure exams. Ours all got postponed. Um, me, personally, I'm almost done with my requirements, so whenever we do get back, it won't be too much of a struggle for me, but um, a lot of people are kind of freaking out, and uh, we're just trying to do our best. I'm, I'm the, the president of my class as well, and uh, – been networking with all the, uh, class presidents all across every D4 class in the nation, trying to get everyone together and networked and just get a plan to how we can combat uh, all the challenges that we're facing with, with getting licensed and urging state boards to um, figure out some sort of alternative pathways or get creative to figure out how we're going to get licensed since the traditional way is likely not going to us, not, gonna, not really going to work for us to get in the workforce. But Wow, wow, man. Good luck, bro. I, I just thank you. Yeah, it's a good fun. It's awesome. It's uh it's really incredible to have it see how everyone's coming together around this and everyone's in the same boat and we're all facing the same challenges. So it's been it's been great to have at least a little bit of an outlet on Facebook, social media, networking with those people that are going through the same uh same craft that we are. And that's that's you know, some of the beauty within dentistry, right? Like it's it's a small field, realistically. And so, you know, these are these are gonna be your colleagues in the future. So it's just kind of like okay, let's all come together and really find right. out the best solution because, you know, we have to. There's no other option at this point. We have right. to work together. Oh, y'all can relate because it's all, you know, we're all doing the same thing. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, I'm going to have to ask you to go back to your first year now. I know it was a while ago, but um, can you kind of remember kind of like the out, outline of your first year? Like, were you all taking a bunch of didactic classes, I'm sure, but like were you yes. all exposed to clinic during that first year? Like, how was the whole layout of that? Our first year is um, mostly didactic. The way that our school set up, we have, um, you're taking anatomy, you're taking histology. Uh, those both obviously have labs. 
I think we took, oh, and I might butcher this, but um, I think micro as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then we take, you take like the only, the only dental class, you take dental anatomy with a lab. And that's a, like a, that's a long lab. It's a whole day, mm -hmm. um, dental anatomy. And then sec, and then you also take a dental materials uh, class. The dental anatomy we're doing, um, we do, we carve teeth out of a block of wax, a whole tooth. Um, a lot of people do wax ups on type of dance. We don't, we don't do a lot of that until D2 year. We do a little bit more. Okay. Uh, but I would say the breakdown is like 80, 20 didactic to like dental related. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So are you able to actually assist in clinic if you want to, or you're just kind of like off limits in the yeah, clinic? you sort of could. And there's an occasional person who does, but like you're still transitioning and you think that life could not possibly be harder. And so you feel like all, you have no free time and you're going to die and you're, you're drowning and you're just trying to survive. Um, and then you get hit with D2 year and that's uh, the real way. But you're technically allowed to assist, um, but there's not really like a program set up for, for like time specifically set for that. Um, and so you're pretty much out of the clinic. You're due on your, you do a couple like you take impressions on each other and stuff like that, but nothing. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. And so I'm, I'm asking every school this, you know, what's unique about Creighton? You know, what's something that you, you know, I mean, granted, you haven't gone to any other dental school, but like something that you know is a special about Creighton in itself. Um, Creighton is one thing, well, I, yeah, just having talked to, and this is something that I didn't realize at the time when I was applying, but uh, this is like the number one thing that um, I think makes Creighton awesome is we have no specialty programs. So, what that allows us to do is get a super well-rounded clinical experience. And so I've had, I've been able to be super fortunate to be able to get a ton of experience with implant placement and restoring implants, uh, molar endo, uh, all different kinds of perio surgeries, third molar extractions, uh, just surgical extractions in general. I pulled a couple hundred, maybe 300 teeth, um, you know, and that's not, I'm not, not everyone does all of those things, but you definitely have much more of an opportunity where like a lot of other schools that do have specialty programs, you know, they're not, molar endo is gonna get poached off by the endo residents. Um, surgical extractions are gonna go to the surgery residents or GPR residents or whatever sort of uh, program they might have there. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely the number one thing that uh, is unique about Creighton that I think makes, makes it great. Right now, and that that is huge. And I, you know, I don't know if our viewers, the pre-dents, understand. You know, they might it might sound like it's a negative at first. You know, hearing that there aren't you know specialty right. programs at the school, but within dentistry, everybody you want to get exposed to as much as possible. So if you're actually able to place these implants, actually able to do uh, molar canals with endo, it's it's huge. You know, so that's a, a huge advantage that a lot of other schools don't have. The uh, you know don't have that opportunity. So that's great. That's great. Yeah, it's and been so, yeah. So and so to like kind of end the interview, I kind of want to ask you like a more personal question. If you could go back in time while you were going through the application process, um, you know, what's one piece of advice that you would give yourself um, now that you're just looking back on your entire journey throughout the right. school? I like I just it kind of goes back to my last answer, and like I said, I didn't realize that Creighton's curriculum was set up like that. Um, I didn't, I didn't place the value as much in that. And I just happened to get lucky and choose a school that, that had all that. So I would recommend that if, if you're applying and this is what I would tell myself is look at the, um, as best you can get an idea of the requirements for each school. Mm -hmm. And it's super difficult to compare because everyone's got their weird, every school's got their own different weird, like point right. system with points rack up. But, um, uh, if you can compare the specialty procedures, like you can probably compare, uh, crowns and number of things you need to do, but then if you much exposure um, you're getting with molar endo and how many, if you're getting any implant experience um, and those types of things. And if you could look at how, you know, even maybe the requirements and then also just like what other things you're exposed to, because um, I place no weight on that, but you know, I know that there's some schools that they only get to, uh, like 
five teams and those schools might have awesome pros and do a ton of research and be great in placement into specialty programs and stuff um, that they have specialty programs at their school and you can network within those things. So um, th that's great. But for me, I think it's so important to get that well-rounded education. I do want to be a GP and, um, and I want to be, do as much, you know, keep as much in-house as I can, as much specialty procedures as I can. So finding a school that would allow you to get exposure to those things, I think is super critical. And that's what I would tell myself or anyone else applying to dental school is to dig into those requirements at each school and then see what your clinical experience is gonna look like. Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, you just dropped a lot of information. I think, you know, a lot of people, especially a lot of people don't know what they wanna do. So even you wanted to be like a super GP. Um, for everybody who doesn't know, that's a general a dentist who does a lot of procedures that usually are going to be referred out, they're able to do certain things. So like implants, for example, granted it's becoming a lot more common for general dentists to do that, but usually you might send that to a periodontist or you might send it to the oral surgeon. So um, if you want to become a super GP, you want to keep that in house and it's, it's becoming, I mean, I want to be a super GP as well. Uh, I think that it's becoming more normalized, um, especially with us having all a lot of access to take CE credits and, you right, know, be able to build up our competency within these different procedures. So, so that is huge, and and I appreciate right. you, you know exposing that to the public. Um, yeah, and I, mean, I, 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 I'm not gonna pretend that I'm gonna graduate and just be like the implantologist of the world, or that I'm gonna be an oral surgeon by any means, or a periodontist, or an endodontist, or at that level. But um, I can tell you that, like, your confidence after doing you know, 20 surgical extractions is going to be much higher than if you only did one or two. Um, you're like my, I feel like I've been able, I've been super lucky even just with, with the patients that I've, I've like, even at Creighton, I've gotten really lucky with implants and I had like a, I've been able to place a dozen or so um, with my own hands. And so that doesn't make me an implantologist, but then when I take the extra CE, it's just going to have such a stronger foundation, I feel like. And so it's just going to make, um, my growth from this point with someone standing over my shoulder. I got a periodontist looking over my shoulder as I'm placing these implants, giving me all that feedback. That's like the best, um, best kind of growth. So just now my foundation, I feel like is so much stronger uh, and I can pick where I want to invest my, my growth from here. Awesome. Awesome. Kevin, thank you so much. Um, if any of our viewers want to reach out, if they have any questions, like what's the best way that they can get in contact with you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. I'm, I'm not, um, I don't have any big following or anything like that. I'm not a, any sort of influencer, but um, yeah, I think my, my Instagram is at Kevin underscore Reardon and my, my name on Facebook, obviously. Um, if you want to, yeah, I guess those are probably the two best. Send me a message. I'm pretty good about uh, checking that back, but. Awesome. Awesome. And of course I'll put that in the description so that, like I said, if anybody does have any questions, they can definitely reach out. But uh, for sure. Heather, once again, from the future DDS family, you know, we really do appreciate your time. I mean, we have a lot more of it right now, but you know, regardless, your time is uh, extremely valuable. So we do appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Happy to be on. And if this helps even a single person uh, choose Creighton or, or not, you know, if it's not for you, that's, that's totally great too. But uh if this helps, you know, you're fighting, the, you're, uh, you're doing a good service for everyone setting this up and all these pre out there. I know they get a lot of value out of this. So I appreciate it, man. We appreciate it. We do. We do. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Um, and if you have any questions for us at Future DDS, you can shoot us a DM on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you all as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.